fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and the hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Hi! Countless sun-baked miles of travel lay behind the long train of white-topped wagons. More miles studded with unknown dangers lay ahead. The people in those wagons had left the life behind them and looked forward to a new life in the West. Jim Hatfield led the way, driving his horses from the seat of his prairie schooner. His wife rode at his side. Mary, why don't you crawl in back and take a little nap? I will when I get sleepy. Right now, I'm not a bit tired. Are you sure about that? Mm, sure about that. Hey, Jim. <laughs> the guide's calling you, Jim. Huh? Oh. Hold that, Martin. Bring your horse up close. Oh, pull that oh. Easy, easy there, boy. Easy. I've been wanting to speak to you, Jim. Figure there's no use putting it off any longer. Anything wrong? Well, I'll tell you. Ever since you took me on as guide, there's been a certain amount of resentment brewing. How's that? Dave Walton has his own ideas about the right trail. His ideas are some different from mine. What's he been saying? He keeps talking about the Oregon Trail. He thinks you should follow that one instead of the Santa Fe. That's already been decided, Martin. We're going to Santa Fe. Oh, a lot of men have turned to Walton's side. A majority? I don't know about that, Jim. There might be. Walton's been making a lot of secret talk. He's got a number of men thinking you're uh, too old to know what's best. Too old, huh? Maybe it's none of my affair, Jim, but I thought you should know. Yeah. Well, thanks. I'll drop back and make sure everything's all right with the other wagons. Just hold the course as you're going. Right. Come on, there. Well, if Dave Wharton isn't the most ungrateful pup I ever heard of. Jim, why do we have to have one troublemaker like that? I must be a half-blind old fool. He thrills me to think something like that's been going on right under my nose. Confound Dave Walton. Maybe I should have a talk with him and give him a piece of my mind. Get up there. Well, don't take it out on the horse. Hey there, Walton. Yeah? What do you want, guys? Mind if I climb to your seat for a minute? Now, come ahead. I'll slide over and make room. Now. There. It'll be easier to talk this way. Would your horse stay alongside? Sure thing. Yeah, what's on your mind, Martin? Well, I'll tell you, Dave. There's a couple of things I thought you ought to know. Such as what? 
Now, you've been saying some mighty fine things about Jim Hatfield. I sure I have. He's a mighty fine man. Uh-huh. And he acts like a mighty good friend of yours, don't he? Well, he is a good friend. Mm. Uh, maybe I'd better not say anything. Well, what do you mean? Well, Hatfield has been saying that you've told lies about him. What? He thinks you've been turning some of the people against him. Well, that's not true. I haven't done anything of that kind. I know that, Walt. There's a number of men who prefer the Oregon Trail, but they're all like me. They're willing to go along with the majority. I know that. That's why I figure Hatfield's being ornery in accusing you of turning people against him. I reckon the trouble comes from Hatfield being sensitive about his age. Sensitive about his age? Well, that's the first I've heard of anything like that. Oh, he is, Dave. I can see it. He resents you and the other younger men. Figures you'll outdo him when you finally reach the place where you aim to settle down. Well, of all the fool notions. Oh, he's likely right about that, Walton. But that don't give him no call to say ugly things about you. What kind of ugly things? I, I, I hate to tell you. What ugly the... things has Hatfield been saying? Well, you know how things have been disappearing from the different wagons in the last few nights. What about it? Of course, Hatfield don't come right out and accuse you of being a thief. Did he hint that I was a thief? Well, why, that two-faced old toad. As I see it, he hopes to set the men against you. That is, as many of them as he can. Uh, oh, I see. Well, I'm sure sorry that I had to be the one to tell you all. That's all right, Martin. Thanks. No, I reckon I better get back to my saddle. Yeah. I want to ride ahead and take a look beyond the crest of that rise. It's about time to watch for a camping place for the night. Yeah, that's right. I'll let you know if I hear any more. All right, thanks. Get up. Riding far ahead, the guide was soon over a slight rise and out of view of the men in the wagon train. He cut sharply to one side and reined up next to a large rock formation. Oh, go there, boy. Oh. In a moment, he heard the beat of hoofs, and an Indian wearing clothes that had apparently been taken from a pioneer came into view. <laughs> Good for Charlie. He's right on the job. Oh, oh, oh. Uh. Hi there, Charlie. I figured you'd see me right ahead and know I wanted to power. Uh, me see you. you. Had any trouble keeping abreast of the wagon train? No trouble. I got to hand it to you. You sure do a slick job of keeping out of sight. Oh, that not hard. Why you ride ahead? Why you want talk with Charlie? I just wanted to say that I've started the ball rolling. I put a few words in the right places. Ah. Took a little time for me to find out which one of the men would be most likely to split the train. I finally settled for a young, high-spirited critter named Dave Walton. Oh. He and Jim Hatfield will spend the rest of the day thinking over what I said. By the time we make camp for the night, they'll both be boiling mad. What me tell, Chief? You tell them that I'll have that train split up in less than two days. Maybe inside of the next 24 hours. Me tell, Chief. Tell them that when I'm done, you won't have to worry about tackling so many wagons at one time. I'll see that part of the outfit cuts off on the Oregon Trail. That good. If he'll watch the Santa Fe Trail, he'll see not much more than half of the wagons will be on it. Uh. You can also tell him there's more firearms and hardware than I figured. <laughs> and plenty of fire water. <laughs> uh, that good. That plenty good. You boys can have everything but the cash. Cash is all I want. That good bargain. Cash is no good to you Redskins anyhow. So everyone will be satisfied. <laughs> everyone but the pioneer. Ah, uh, that right. Now I better get back to wagons. I want to be sure to keep things stirred up so as Hatfield and Walden will have a showdown as soon as we make camp. Hi there, kids. Fixing your wagon? Yeah, that's right, Hatfield. Figure to put a brace on her while we're in camp. Maybe save a breakdown on the trail. Well, if you need any help, let me know. All right. Well, hi there, Loomis. Hey, that stew smells mighty good. Well, you have some, Hatfield? Well, thanks, but I gotta get this water over to my outfit. Mary's waiting for it. <laughs> Baby sounds right husky. <laughs> yeah, critter's hungry. Oh, 
hurry with that one. Yes. The fire will be burned out before I can get it boiled for the coffee. Well, there you are, Mary. Uh, you get supper going. I'll be back in a little while. Where are you going now, Jim? Over there. I want to have a few words with Dave Walton. Jim, do be careful what you say. Dave Walton better be careful what he says. Walton, I want to talk to you. Huh? Oh, no, oh, it's you, huh? I've been hearing a few things. Well, you're not the only one. I just want you to know you're not needed in this outfit. Oh. Well, so now you're inviting me to pull stakes, is that it? Seems to me you don't need an invitation. Well, I don't. I wondered how soon you'd get around to speaking your piece to my face instead of behind my back. I don't say things behind any man's back. Oh, you don't? Huh? No, I don't. Hey, Jim, don't start a row here in the cab. I'm not starting any row. If this old goat don't want me in his outfit, he can go his way and I'll go mine. I don't want troublemakers. I said that at the start and I say it now. Now, Jim, maybe you're mistaken about the thievery. The thievery? What's the trouble, Jim? Martin, you keep out of this. Walton, is it true that you've caught about half the outfit ready to cut loose with and you? What if it is? So that's what you were doing when you rode from one wagon to the other during the last couple of hours. Lining up men to desert the train. Well, huh? what if I was? There's plenty of men who'd rather take the Oregon Trail. Then they can take it. Hold on, Hatfield. You run up against Indians or something, you might need the younger men. We'll get along without him. You bet you will. Of course, I'm just a guide, but it seems you to me You keep that out of it, Martin. Maybe if you apologize to each me other... Me apologize? For what? You may have said things without thinking. I said nothing I don't mean. That goes double for me. I'll be glad to be rid of you. So will the others who are going to Oregon with me. What's the trouble? Jim, Jim. please, Jim, don't have any trouble. I won't have any trouble. If Walt wants to leave us, he can do it. Look at anyone else. We don't need them. You might regret that, Hatfield. I won't regret a thing. Neither will I. Hey, uh, how many of you aim to go with Walton? Walton, this is none of your affair. Well, I got to know, Hatfield. Oh, Jim, it won't do to split We're up. already split up, Mrs. Hatfield. You couldn't hire me to stay with this outfit. I'm going to Oregon. Me too. All right. All right. We'll settle this right now. We'll split this outfit and head in two directions. All right. Let's go. All right. The camp was soon divided into two groups. The wagons that were to accompany Dave Walton were moved to the side and lined up, while those that were to continue on the Santa Fe Trail closed up the empty spaces. Two men, one an Indian, the other masked, watched the movement from a hill nearby. They could hear enough to realize what was happening. Otto, they're dividing that wagon train. Ah, and that's not good. They're not doing it because they want to. They're doing it because of a disagreement. Sound like plenty big argument. Yes. Probably it started over something very small. Ah. That Overland Trail does things to men. When they get this far, they're tired. Their nerves are raw and their tempers are on edge. They're quick to resent the wrong word, quick to fight. Um, Indians west of here. Yes, I know there are. Indians not attack big wagon train, but Indian attack small wagon train. If that outfit splits up, both units may be wiped out. I'm going to see if we can do something about it. Come on, fellow. Get him up, small silver. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger knew that the wagon train was preparing to divide. He also knew that this might have disastrous consequences. With this knowledge, the masked man and Tonto rode west through the long hours of the night. Daybreak found them reining up at a fork in the Overland Trail. Here's where the trails divide, Tonto. The Oregon Trail branches off to the northwest toward the Platte River, then goes toward Fort Laramie. Isn't that right? The Santa Fe Trail goes that way. And plenty bad Indian over that way. Are you sure of that? Ah. Me no Indian camp? Not far from Kansas River. I see. And them feller bad Indian. That attack the wagon? Attack at wagon, not too many. I wonder how many Indians are in the village. Um, me not know that. Um, maybe find out. Can you? Me try. And learn all you can. See if the Indians know that wagons are approaching. Ah. I'll wait for you over there near that water hole. Then I'm up to scout. Martin, the scheming guide, had also ridden through the night. He had gone directly to the Indians' camp, and there found Charlie Red Eagle. I had to tell you, Charlie, things have worked out faster than I thought. Huh? What happened? The wagons are already divided. They plan to set out this morning in two different columns. <laughs> it's reached a point where all the men have taken sides. Uh, me tell chief, me go... What's the matter? Stranger come in camp. Oh, another Indian. Oh, oh Scott, oh, fellow. What do you want? Uh, me, uh, me, Tonto. What do you want? Pule, Matu, Unsede. What to say? Him hungry, want food. Who Matila? Ah. What's that? Him here alone. Hold on, I've seen that critter. I'd never forget that horse. Let me talk to him. Ah. Hey, you. Remember me? Uh, me come here, want food. Yeah? Well, you just wait a minute. Charlie, give me a hand. We're looking at saddlebags. No. No, you not look. Hold it. Stand right where you are. Or I'll blow the living daylights through you. There's something mighty curious about you, but I can't remember what it is. Get the saddlebag on that side unclasped, Charlie. Yeah, uh, me get it. Don't you try a fast move, Tonto. Doggone, where have I heard that name? Me got this bag open. See what's inside it. I'm still working on this one. Uh, here, food. Yeah? Here, food, two, three days. Well, Tonto, how about that? You come here saying you're hungry, and all the time you got food in the saddlebag. And me tell truth. Maybe you're hungry. But by Thunder, you don't have to be. You got the makings of meals. You got that bag open? Yeah, Charlie. Now we'll see what's here. Yeah, some tins of food. <laughs> I wasn't so stupid, huh, Tonto? Stay there. I still got a gun on you. Hey, uh, uh, what that? Oh, mask. Now, what... Hold on, Charlie. I'm beginning to remember a couple of things. There's a masked rider, a white horse. The Lone Ranger, that's it. This Redskins is partner. Ranger? Yeah. I met up with him once some time ago. You remember that, Tonto? Ah, uh, me remember. Well, why are you here? What'd you come here for? Answer me. Where's that masked man? Did he send you here? Me not talk. Charlie, listen to me. If that masked man's around here, he suspects something. You tell the chief that he can't lose no time. Lose no time. The wagon outfit split up already. By the time you can get to the Santa Fe line, the rest will be too far north to hear the gun play. Don't wait any longer. Tell the chief that, Sammy. Uh, me, Sammy. Hold on. Uh. Get the rope off Tonto's saddle. We'll hogtie this critter, and then I'll persuade him to answer a few questions. No, that's not good. No? Well, you'll see. Before you go far, man on hill open fire. What's that? Man on the hill. You turn! Hey! Charlie, Charlie! You turn up! Me hit him! Let you me take him! Let me up! Get out of the way! Get out. Hey, him go! Him get away! Where's my gun? Where's that gun I had? Get over, Charlie! Get out of the way! Help me find it! Ah, here it is! I'll show him! Ah, you miss him! That doggone redskin! Ah, uh, him too far hit! You fool! You saw what he did? He got me off guard! Hit me! Picked me up and threw me at you! Uh, him say, look at Hill. You look. You plenty fool. Well, never mind that. Tell your chief that he'd better get set to attack right now or he'll be the fool. As soon as that Indian reports to the Lone Ranger, there'll be a masked man heading for Bent's Fort. Soldier there. Yeah. And if you don't want an army to fight with, you critters have got to move right now. Oh, 
Oh, Scott. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. Oh. Otto, I heard gunfire. Plenty of trouble. Me talk fast. Can't reach Ben's fort in time. Me know that. There's only one other place to go. We'll go there. Come on, Tonto, set it, big fella. Come on, Silver. Get him out. God, it's Mary. It sure seems lonesome without Dave and all the younger men. I know, Jim. I feel as badly about the split as you do. But I feel even worse when I think that Dave would say such things about you. Too old. You're not too old, Jim. If Dave hadn't been so hot-headed, we might have talked things out. I wish we had. I wonder if that guide went with Dave's part. I don't know, Mary. It don't matter much. From here on, the trail's marked. Jim, I've been thinking all day. About what? About that guide. He just took his word for a lot of things about Dave. Well, he'd have no reason to lie about him. No, but all the same, you didn't give Dave a chance to deny them. I, I wish you had. Uh, what's that? Jim, it, it sounded like an Indian. Jim, there's more of them. Jim, Indians ahead. Oh. Walk ahead. How far ahead? They'll be here in just a few minutes. Come this way. Yes, and riding hard. Pass the word to pull the wagons into a circle. Get up there. Get around there. Get there. Form a circle. Get up there. 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 Come on, Vince. Get up there. Get the rifles up there. Yes, Jim. Get up there. Pioneers knew what they were up against. As quickly as possible, they drew the wagons into a tight circle, unhitched the horses, and then turned the wagons on their sides. Now tip this one. Tip her right over. Never mind what's inside. Get set. Easy to ride in the circle. And moving in all the time. Get this next wagon over. Give me a hand. <laughs> The Lone Ranger and Tonto raced almost due north toward the wagons that had left the original train to follow the Oregon Trail. Dave Walton and one of his friends were in the leading wagon. When they heard a cry ring out from the hill on their left, they turned and saw two horsemen. Hey, Loomis. Look at those horses coming down the hill. Great guns. You ever seen anything travel faster? No, sir. Never in all my born days. Hey, hey, take a look at the first rider. What about him? I don't... Hey, these masks. Yeah, that's what I thought. The other one's an engine. They're coming at us like they mean business. Yeah, what kind of business? Better get your gun where you can reach it fast. Two men wouldn't attack a whole wagon train. Yeah, I don't know about that. A man that can ride like that might tackle anything. They're riding right up to us. Oh, 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 Indians, they need you. Oh, go tell them they wanted to be rid of us. Your guide is working with the Indians. What guide? Martin. He led your friend into a massacre. And who are you? What's the difference? For all you know, I might be an outlaw. That doesn't change things. Hatfield, Conway, Hurley, all the others are in danger. Without you, they'll never see sunset. Gosh, Dave. What'd you say about Martin? Martin's working with Indians. They're attacking your friend. What? Hey, Dave. Martin's the one that got me down on Hatfield. Well, me too. He wanted to split your train. Great day. Come to think of it, Martin's the one that turned me against Hatfield. If he talked to Hatfield like he talked to me... Now, uh, Loomis, you bring the wagon. I'm riding a saddle horse. Hey, boy! Steady, boy. We're cutting south. Hey. Indians are taking our friends. Oh, hey. Let's bring those horses south and give them the whip. Follow me. Come on! Oh. Number two heavy. That's why they dared attack the dirty redskins. They wouldn't have tackled us if we hadn't split up. There. I got one of them. Well, at least we're down fighting. Hey, Jim, look over there. There's our guy. It's Martin. Why, that horny double crossing skunk sold us out to the redskins. Just let me get a beat on him, Ed. He got it. One of the others got him ahead of me. No. They got you. Not bad. I managed to keep going. 
Jim, you load your own rifle from now on. I'm doing some shooting on my own. There's one. Yeah, they're riding awful close, Jim. Yeah. We can't hold out much longer. Hell no, they've been fighting. <laughs> Jim, Jim, look over there. Horsemen coming over the hill. Where is they come? Mary, they're fighting on the Indians. Oh, thank goodness. Hang on, boys. Help's coming. Look, wagons are following the horsemen. Wagons, sure enough. Look at them come. Jim, Jim, it's our boy. There's Dave and Kit and Sam and Loomis. Look at them riding behind that man on the white horse. The reinforcements dashed straight at the hard-riding Indians with guns blazing. Many Indians fell before the attack. The others lost no time in racing for the safety of the distant hills. Jim, we finished taking care of your wounded friends. I, I don't know what to say. Dave told me how you sent him and the boys here, then led the way for them. Well, the last of the wagons is back in shape and ready to travel. Dave, I, I haven't had a chance to speak to you. I've been so busy since the fight. Uh, Jim, I, I had all of our wagons put back in your line. I, I hope you don't mind. Mine. Doggone it, Dave. How could I mind after hearing what the masked man had to say about that scheming polecat that poses our guide? And you know? Sure I do. This man told... Hey, where'd he go? Uh, Pete, where's that masked man that was here a minute ago? Over there, Jim. With the Indian. Hey, mister. Here on, Jim. The trail's well marked. We'll look for you in Santa Fe. One, two, three. Get out, Jim, if the West has many men like him, I'm going to be proud of our new home. I'll do that. Oh. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>